हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल माय नेम इज सागर प्रजापति एंड आई होप यू गाइस आर डूइंग वेरी वेल तो इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू अबाउट द ट्रूथ व्हिच मेनी स्टूडेंट डस नॉट नो सो व्हाट इज दैट ओके सो लेट्स गो विद द डेटा ब्रिक्स सी यू गाइस नो मी दैट आई एम टीचिंग डेटा ब्रिक्स ऑन माय चैनल एज वेल एज ऑन माय वेबसाइट सम सम ऑफ द पेड कोर्सेस आई हैव लॉन्च ऑलरेडी राइट सो आई एम सीइंग अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल हु आर आस्किंग लाइक silly questions or they are asking a uh, doubt and they are saying that hey sagar you did not cover rdd you did not cover mount points you did not cover some xyz old technology old concepts of data breaks in your course whatever it is maybe it's a free video or it's it's a like a paid course or so to be honest my answer is to everyone don't learn rdd nowadays i mean if you want to learn you can learn it but don't learn a lot don't give a lot of time to learning old concepts databricks has a lot of new feature nowadays like delta live tables uh, modern workflows gen ai things vector search we have liquid clustering like we have many new features of delta tables no i mean i am not sure which what which company and in which project you are using rdd like it is being said that we should use data frames right not rdd i am i am i am to be honest i am not sure people are learning uh, you know to if we were learning non point hey dude nowadays databricks only recommend to use unity catalog right but why you want to learn why you why, why why you want to learn uh, mount point why why you want to again is still link data lake storage using mount point right you can use unity catalog i mean not maybe not today tomorrow your company is going to migrate from hive meta store to unity catalog if it is not right so better to learn all these new features like it is not like you know learning unity catalog hey what is uh, a catalog what is a uh, schema what is uh, tables volumes and so so things we have more than that what in unity catalog we have lake house monitoring we have profiling we have a uh, we have a uh, yeah and yeah those things we have it then we have sql warehouse we have dashboards right so learn all those stuff i mean you don't need to stick to very basic stuff hey people are still posting question uh, you know some influencer i have noticed i mean not some like many in 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 influencer what they are doing they are posting the same question again and changing the company name and the question is like uh, uh, what is broadcast join to be honest i i mean i am also uh, you know working on a company we are working on a product called lake fusion.ai and there we haven't used broadcast join as of now because databricks handle delta table handles by by their own now right and maybe it if it is needed then it is not at that much because we have serverless compute like now before people were using job compute we were using personal compute right now databricks migrating the things from job compute to serverless compute you do not need to define your workload i mean not workload i would say the compute right based on the workload databricks serverless compute will assign the nodes the workers and so and they will do their job right so this is the one thing related to databricks second thing is what i want to tell you when i when i talk to people you know they want to uh, i mean they want to learn area of uh, today right so what is area of try to understand area is a drag and drop tool right and uh, suppose you want to bring data from gen2 or from any sql db you can still do it by your own i mean without without area of you can use uh, you can use rest apis of those uh, sql db's or gen2 maybe there are some python sdks are written so you can leverage those things and then you can write your own code python code simple python code and bring the data from xyz location to the gen2 or whatever location it is because basically generally we use adf to migrate the data from one place to another right or from one server to another so still you can do it using database i'm not talking about only database you can use some different tool also or you can write your own code 
because there's a myth like people are um, when whenever people uh, ask me hey sir what should i learn should i learn adf first hey adf is just a tool man i mean you can learn it tomorrow also and companies also not focusing more on the adf because they also know that hey this is just a drag and drop tool why would i give too much uh, i mean why would i ask too much questions uh, related to adf because anyone can learn it even i i, I mean not i means if i am a newbie i can also learn it very very easily right so and databrix is um, uh, you know launching a new product or new feature called uh, called lake flow connect so what does it do it's a etl basically so think about from today from today to next 5 months or 6 months or 1 year companies will not going to use adf for their project if they are using databricks generally what happens company use adf plus database combination right so why company use adf because they want to migrate the data from one place to another into gentoo and then they take gentoo ka data into a branch layer and then they do all the processing using databricks now think about it if databricks only provide the etl concept i mean etl feature why would any company take two two subscriptions they will not do it right so they will only use then either adf or either database right so what i know that people generally don't use adf much they will generally use uh, database only if it is uh, if it is not costly yet right apart from this you know a database has like gen ai feature right vector search lms model serving endpoints so everything we we have it but adf does not have so most chance are most chances to use uh, database rather than adf right so this is the second thing third thing recently you know uh, i mean i am been talking to many students they are said and they they are they are telling that their company are the forcing them to learn gen ai they are saying that build some automation do some or or automation using gen ai rather than so, so otherwise your job will be will be i mean something can happen with your job right we have to take some decisions if you don't know gen ai things in after 6 months or one year right so and i was asking and i was talking to one of the lady and she was telling that hey i want to learn this gen ai things using databricks or maybe using azure because my company uses that i said hey why would you restrict why were restricting yourself to a cloud see databricks has a gen ai feature but it has a just a drag and drop right it's not like the core feature i mean i mean if you want i mean if you want to learn gen ai in databricks you can easily learn it in like 10 days you just want you just need to understand how that vector vector search works and so right and then even you, you you can leverage those tools right i am saying learn basics like we have similarity search concept how the simi similarity search happens using embeddings right what is the embedding why we why do we need to get embeddings how the embedding uh, works how the embedding creates how i mean why we need a vector dbs to store the embeddings right how lrm works how prompt engineering works right so all those concept if you know from the basic then you can leverage this knowledge in any of the tool right even in the azure aws maybe gcp snowflake database and so so things or maybe open source you can you, you can build your own uh, things right so there there is a one uh, one uh, there is a one uh, we can say one project what you can build using gen ai see generally there are i mean there are, there are many there are many there are many uh, migration projects happening right so what you can do Uh, i am saying hey i want to i suppose there is a sql uh, sql db project i want to migrate those scripts uh, to the to the what to the to the database and we i and i want to write a five spark code for that right so manually if i do it will take a lot of months like one month two month three month four month and i need some resources also to do right what i can do see every each code is written in the Uh, that was right so what i'll do I'll, i'll i'll write a python code in my local device simple local device and what what i'll do i will say hey clone the repository first clone means make a copy in my local system 
once a copy is done of the sql warehouse or sql db ka scripts and all right one by one then what i will do i will iterate one by one i will iterate one by one sql uh, queries and i will send that data the sql query data into the llm and with that llm and with, with that file if i upload uh, right i will write a same prompt hey act as a pyspark developer this code is written in sql maybe mysql or whatever convert this query the file the query sql query to pyspark okay and save the and convert into a notebook dot uh, py or we can say dot not not notebook i can say dot py and save this notebook ha huh, just dot py right and save this notebook into this location whatever the prompt we will give it will do the work right maybe it will not save directly we have to do it manually but yeah we can do it or we can explore it and that's done you're done then what will do then what you will do you will you will sync that repository into a database and then run it one by one and we'll see whether it's failing or not right so i'm just giving an example maybe i'm no i'm i'm wrong but if you want to learn gen ai you need to learn the basic concept if you do not know then it will be a difficult task for you in future after six months or maybe after 26 because i'm also building up building a uh, gen ai product and it is not that easy you know see building a project project or product is easy but uh, you know optimizing it uh, it's very difficult because see if you are if you are a gen ai architect right then you need to know you need to understand the cost of the llm like which llm you should use see in database we have meta we have debris mr mr is gonna decommission i guess or it's already decommission de 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 so uh, Mistral is very, very, uh, very, you know, very cheap model. Let's say we have deep, deep seek, right? Deep seek is very deep, uh, very uh, cheap model. But Meta is very, uh, very costly model. So you need to understand, hey, which model should I use? Should I use this or that, right? So this is what I'm saying. I'm, I'm trying to basically say that, hey, don't only focus on the drag and drop tool. Don't learn the old concept if you don't know old concept it is okay learn new concept world is moving and you are still in 2020 right so wake up dude don't follow too many influencers who run for the money to just post the same uh, same uh, post for a boss coder academy or some xyz academy to gain some attraction okay or to gain some money do your own research and that's it. Chalo. Thank you. Bye-bye. And I will be giving you a link of my courses. If you want, you can enroll into it. And otherwise, not a problem. We'll meet you in the next lecture. Till then, thank you. Bye-bye. Shukriya.